Uh, my name is Ian Kuyaba. I'm the VP of Global Corporate Sales and Partnerships here at Latera. Alvin, you want to do a quick introduction? Yes, I am Alvin Tejamulia. I'm the CTO of Net Documents. Fantastic. Thanks, Alvin. I've had the privilege of knowing Alvin for several years and invited him on um, for a, a very important subject matter, actually, um, something that's fitting for this year, especially. Um, so I figured we, we'd get right into it here um, and, and kind of discuss some important topics, um, something that's resonating with a lot of law firms and organizations that we talk to. And, and I think at the end of the day, everyone can agree that the effects of you know this year's COVID situation um, really is permanently enforcing uh, the need for remote access to documents and data, um, of course, to support remote employees. But with that in mind, what, what are the most important considerations uh, for organization law firms when planning to move to a uh, cloud-based technology? Yes, uh, Ian, uh, that is wonderful. So I'm going to share a little bit of my screen here, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Nick, you can probably see. There we go. Yep, let me just present this. You know, uh, COVID is a very interesting situation because what, what we're seeing is that people are working from home and there is a big question, you know, is there increase or, or decrease of productivity when you working from home? Uh, we in that documents, we've had a very interesting scenario that we can actually measure that, measure the total number of transactions that a user do, does during a particular week. So let's say from Sunday to Sunday, and then see exactly, you know, how many documents open, how many documents, you know, edited, how many uh, searches, uh, workspaces, uh, uh, access, etc. So, so this is actually a little summary here of our pre-COVID and 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 during COVID, during the last, you know, for the three main regions. And what we're basically seeing is that uh, the increase in productivity during COVID has been 20% higher than pre-COVID. In other words, you know, if you have the proper document services in the way that you access documents and work on them and, 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 and overall productivity is measured, then COVID is, has increased 20%. So then you start asking, wow, that is absolutely fantastic. Because of course, you know, because you have no commute time and no distractions, you know, so this is actually possible. So what we're asking here is, you know, what are the requirements that we can make that uh, useful? I just created a list here, you know, instead of reading every one of them, and then maybe I'll just highlight a few of them. So the, one of the most important things, Ian, is the consistent user experience. So we don't want COVID to be a disaster recovery scenario that, oops, I have to work from home and now I have to do something different. Because the concept of having documents at home, you know, documents, uh, you don't want you to have your documents stored at home. It's very insecure. There is nobody managing, you know, on a professional basis, you know, your, work, your workstation PCs, et cetera. And uh, it's difficult then to access from anywhere else if your documents are at home. Well, you know, if your documents were in, in, in the office, then it's difficult to access from home because it's a different user experience. You have to bring them over, you know, plus the technologies that are working from, from the office is kind of, uh, you know, challenging uh, right now. So the only scenario that we see that is very positive here is that uh, you, you place your documents simply in the cloud. Because if the document is the cloud, accessing from home or accessing in the, from the office, accessing from anywhere is all the same. So, so this is the scenario that we would like to uh, propose that there is no user experience difference, whether you know, it is a hurricane or, or, or what is COVID, you can work from anywhere. You know, another very interesting concept of working from home in, you know, in making this selection is just to make sure that your document services, you know, are making users happy. So Gartner Group you know, initiated a uh, survey and they asked end users, you know, what uh, are, are you willing to recommend your, your document management services? And it's very interesting you know, that you really have to look at very high percentages of yes, because that's measured the user satisfaction. I think there's a third area that is very you know, important in your considerations, you know, Ian. Uh, one of them, what, one of the most important one is the security and the certifications. Uh, many vendors say, oh, we're secure, oh, we're you know, reliable, we have high, high performance, but they don't have anybody third party testing them. You know, they, you know, they don't have the, uh, the SOC or the ISO or the, you know, uh, the GDPR, FINRA, HIPAA, Etc. testing them and to make sure that they are truly compliant. So one of the nice um, 
criteria is to make sure that the vendor has the certifications and the attestations so that you can inherit these attestations also. You know, the concept is that with adopting the service, then you should be automatically GDPR compliant with your documents, that you should be SOC 2 uh, compliant, that you should be ISO 27001 compliant. All of this is very, very critical. Just by stating that, you know, I have certifications because my data center is certified is not enough because the data center is not certifying your processes, your internal, your hiring procedures, all of these type of things. And then, you know, the fact that David says, oh, we have very high standards that, you know, we have like zero trust standards here, you know, which is really good. Well, you know, why not certified if it is any better? So certification is, is, is very, very important, especially those that can be inherited. But I like to, pay one attention here on the security aspect, Ian, because one of the most important critical um, uh, you know, criteria for decision making is how, how, how secure. Uh, from the end user perspective, you know, there is the authentication, there is the access, access control, and then something that nobody talks very much is action control. Authentication you know, tells you who are you, access control, you know, um, what can you access, and the action control, what can you do? So in the authentication, you know, we talk about yeah how important it is a two-factor uh, two authentication. Most document services can do that. In the terms of access control, you know, we have ethical walls uh, and and ACLs. You know, most document managements today, you know, have that type of a, a, a capability, such as the security policy manager or you know, uh, net documents as the workspace security manager. All of that has is is is, is in place. But one, one area that very few people talk about is this concept of action control, which can be also named DLP. How do you prevent data from being lost, from being leaked? Whether it is maliciously or unintentionally, data can get lost. You know, it can be, it, it can be leaked. And this is the process where we, we, we talk about that it is so important to understand you know, how, how, how secure should this matter be, should the contents of these documents. You know, so you, you, you guard not just the access to the matter, but the, act, but the action of what you can do in the matter. You know, can you print? Can you copy? Can you share? Maybe, you know, uh, secret documents, you can't print. You, you, you can't copy. You, you, you can email, or if it's email, it's under very high restrictions. And these type are the action control that prevents you from doing things. You know, it, it is very, very different than, than threat, threat managers. You know, threat managers just crawl through your logs and then say, hey, there is a risk here. You know, of course, that's important. But DLP, you know, says, stop. You cannot do it at the, at the time when you're trying to do the action. So it doesn't just, you know, warn. It prevents. You know, so, so kind of the decision-making, you know, criteria for a cloud-based document management system, you know, these are some of the additional criteria. Make sure that they always publish how much uptime uh, they're having, you know. Uh, Make sure that they're fully integrated with Office 365. In fact, you know, there are some document management systems that are built in into Office 365 without any of additional software from the DM system, you know, but it's just built in into Word, Excel, PowerPoint. That is fantastic. You know, this, the, the, the security, we talk about you know, data loss prevention, and there is also the concept of dual custody cryptography. The cryptography is also very, very important. And then you know, finally is the concept of this multi-tenant you know, concept that it is very, very highly uh, diversified, that it is one login system for the whole continent. There is one cloud, very, very secure. So these are some of the criteria, you know, uh, uh, Ian, for, you know, for- Oh, that's great. That's great, Alvin. And, and I think, you know, th there's a resounding theme, right? Um, I I've heard it from many organizations as well uh, throughout this year, which is, you know, how do we ensure business continuity? How do we ensure the same environment from the office um, as we do at home? And, and these are certainly elements um, to ensure that and ensure success in terms of that. Um, now, one of the other kind of resounding themes I, I hear about as well is going along that lines, how can we ensure that the entirety of our workflow process is, is kind of adhering to business continuity in the sense of um, what I hear a lot of in inheritance? Um, you know, Net Documents is one of our great partners. We have all of our um, products integrated as well. Um, but the beauty of, of really choosing that, you know, pure cloud platform um, really kind of lends itself to, uh, to inheritance. Um, you want to talk a little bit about what that means in terms of um, kind of selecting your, your system from a, a cloud-based perspective? Yeah, inheritance is probably the key word 
uh, from a global uh, one cloud services, you know, uh, it, everybody likes to receive an inheritance. You know, if, if you're a subscriber to a service that it is a one cloud platform, it, it means that you can get uh, an inheritance of everything that they do immediately without loading the software, without waiting, you know, for you to, to deploy. So that documents is integrated with um, Litera, you know, of course. So anything that we do with Litera, anytime when we release it, everybody gets it. You know, I, I just want to, 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 to get back to our inception uh, story. Great picture, you know, Alvin. The story here. <laughs> you, know, you may tell me, hey, uh, I look like 12 at that time. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I was a little older than, uh, than 12, but I tell you, I can still look like that if I didn't have to solve all of this, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> global uh, uh, entropic cryptography issues. <laughs> but but we, right. had, we had a vision. The vision was to create a service that would be a platform in the cloud for document management for law firms. And today there are many document services in the cloud. And I just wanted to highlight, you know, for example, the Amazon Web Services is an AWS S3 Web Services. That's probably one of the most successful, you know, document or storage services in the cloud. They have a sustained transaction, Ian, of 3,500 transactions per second. That's a lot. That means that every single second, somebody does reads or writes 3,500 times, you know, or, uh, wow. Net documents, just the Americas uh, alone has a sustained transaction per second of 3,900 IOs. So 3,900 search search requests or workspace displays or document reads and document writes, you know, with uh, about 3,000 customers, you know, 3,000 law firms that are doing that type of uh, request, uh, managing 11 billion hosted files. So the initial dream that we have, you know, if I look at right now, although it was a very painful transition for these 20 years, it is working because uh, right now we are the largest web repository uh, for legal documents. And, you know, if you look at it, you know, from, uh, from the perspective of what our platform does, you know, our, our platform is extend, extensible, it has encryption, as a unified service that can place your documents anywhere with multiple libraries and we can search through all of them. It is fully compliant like we described, but most importantly is one cloud. The one cloud provides the inheritance concept. And this one cloud says that whatever solutions we put on top of our platform, everybody gets an, inher an inheritance of those solutions and of those updates immediately and instantaneously. So, you know, we have components like how to organize your files you know, with document management, predictive email and OCR services. We have protection services, you know, such as DLP. We have talked about that and uh, plus a few other things. We have the capability of helping you plan your work and your matters, you know, having discussion threads, tasks. We have the, the capability of allowing the users to deliver the documents with collaboration spaces and set builders. And then we have the ability to learn from uh, the documents that you, that you file inside the system. But let's, uh, uh, you know, right now talk specifically about the concept of inheritance. Inheritance is an architectural issue that is very critical. Because if you have, let's say, multiple law firms here, and, you know, some of them have uh, maybe on-premise facilities. Some of them are hosted, meaning that their servers are placed someplace else, but there is still, you know, uh, the concept that one specific document manager instance per law firm. So this is the... This is the concept you know, of, of either a hosted or an on-prem service, where there is one application per firm as opposed to a multi-tenancy infrastructure, you know, that it is one uh, cloud for everybody in the world, single instance of a document management, one cloud. You know, so you have the on-premise, you have the hosted, and then you have the multi-tenant services. In inheritance is associated with multi-tenant services. On the left, and, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, Calvin, but the, the beauty of that, is, especially from a, a Latera perspective, our clients is, uh, you know, as they choose their, their cloud platform, if you will, the applications that we support, um, the applications that they're, they're clients of, will inherit all the great features and benefits that you're talking about with Net Documents. Um, and, and it is a single kind of um, instance of integration as well. So they, they can have that comfort knowing. Um, as they move forward, um, that there's not going to be any more work needed um, as they upgrade a version or anything of that nature because of the, the multi-tenant 
Um, so I just wanted to make sure I highlighted that, um, you know, as a consideration of, of the platform you're moving to, I think that that cannot be stressed enough. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, cause of inheritance, you know, uh, really make sure that, uh, you know, as you, um, you know, as, as you, as you have new software updates, as you have new certifications, as, as you have new hardware improvements, everybody gets it instantly on the same second. No, no updates, no waiting. You know, it's modern architecture, very cost effective because from the vendor perspective, we only have one infrastructure, one, one services. Doesn't matter where you are, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a solo practitioner or a global firm, you know, it doesn't matter if you adopted the service, you know, 20 years ago or adopted the service yesterday, it's all the same service. So it has a super high cost effective for, for the firm and it provides total security because the security infrastructure can be very, very uh, extensive but once we do it, we do it for all. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Alvin, I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball, um, as as 2020 has done to all of us, um, for for how we've kind of uh, you know gone through many challenges, et cetera. And and in talking with a lot of firms and organizations, um, the challenges are abundant, right? Um, there's no shortage of that. But I think the resounding theme was, you know, um, how do we how are we going to support remote employees going forward? I've seen a lot of even in the the corporate organizations, they're saying that this is going to extend into 2021. It's going to be a permanent choice for a lot of employees, et cetera. Um, what do you think the kind of the next challenge is for law firms and organizations once they solve uh, for remote work, et cetera? Um, what, what are some of the key components to ensure that they have this kind of uh, continuous work environment from both in the office and at home? Because you can't go down the hallway um, at your house and, and, and talk to someone about something. Where is this document? Where, where is this uh, file that we're, we're trying to search for? Um, so what in your mind, what do, you, what do you envision is kind of the next challenge for these organizations in terms of ensuring that they have a continuous work product, ensuring that they have the documents, the data that they need, um, and, and have it in a very kind of uh, a continuous process, if you will, without disruption? Yes, uh, 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 Ian, you know, I think that the, that the next challenge will definitely be how do, you, how do you choose a platform and an architecture that will be cohesive across all of the different applications. Applications are moving uh, to, to more of a global uh, and, and access from anywhere requirement. Um, and, and that has to do with, uh, okay, I need to collaborate. I need to have a, a, a way that I can plan my, my work, my workspace uh, related work. It, the way that I can deliver documents to customers, uh, the way that I can do enterprise searches, um, the way that I can have a, a way of doing comparisons and, you know, creating document sets. There are uh, ubiquitous, whether you, whether you do it, you know, at home or in the office, we know that the work environment is going to be different. We know that, you know, we know that even with a vaccine, uh, the work environment will be different because, you know, people have gotten, uh, the benefits of what it is to have the freedom of working anywhere. So, so the concept, you know, that, uh, all of these applications for collaborations, for, uh, for dealing with clients' requests, you know, for opening matters, and all of these things that uh, exist that in the past has been done on, a, you know, on, a, on an individual decisions, you know, will be now uh, thought as a global uh, or a bigger you know, type of uh, decision making. So I don't want to teach people how to log in into different services. I don't want to have different authentication mechanisms. I don't want to have different search mechanisms, whether I'm searching for a task or a discussion thread or a folder or a particular uh, a document. So security, searching, uh, document storage that is smart, that, that knows where it should be depending on the matter, all of that has to be done on a, on a unified fashion. So I, I believe that the concept of having a global service, this, the concept of having a platform that can unify and normalize all of your decisions on you know, storage, on application authentication, on discussions, all of that will be 
greatly accelerated you know, during this time when you can no longer control the users because they come to the office, but the work has to be truly from anywhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so before I go on to my kind of wrap up here, if you wouldn't mind just uh, clicking off sharing your screen up there so I can see your, your face a little bit better there. Um, but as I move into it, there, there's definitely some, some reoccurring themes here, right? Um, we talked about as, you, as organizations, as law firms choose their next generation platform, um, and, and of course, we're talking about data management, document management here. Um, in addition to every other platform, you look at Latera Transact, um, which is our, our fantastic transaction management platform. It's the same considerations, right? As you move into that cloud-based technology, you want to keep these things in mind. Um, so I heard you talk about security, um, which is absolutely paramount. Um, security, first and foremost. Uh, data loss prevention, ensuring that users are, are uh, you know, protection against self. Um, but also protection against actions, as you talked about before. We talked about business continuity. I think that's key and something that, uh, you know, a lot of organizations are trying to solve. How can we replicate the same environment at home for this new work environment uh, while ensuring that we have security, that we have continuity in terms of workflow and, and access, et cetera. Um, so with that being said, um, I'd just like to, to have you kind of conclude um, briefly on, you know, in terms of the entirety of what we talked about, what is kind of that single element that is more important than any other as organizations and law firms choose a SaaS-based cloud technology? Is there one that sticks out to you that's more important than the others that we talked about? I mean, I mean, you and I can talk about this for hours, but um, do, do you think there's one element, if you were to give advice on, on what you should focus on when choosing any SaaS-based, um, cloud-based technology for continuity and remote access. What would that be in your mind, Alvin? Yeah, so sorry here. I'm having difficulty. Oh, it's okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, 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 Ian, I think there are several, but I try to isolate one. You know, uh, of course, uh, from, a, from a firm reputation point of view, security is absolutely critical. You know, from, uh, from a compliance you know, standpoint, all of these uh, compliance certifications is uh, absolutely critical. Uh, but if I were to, to isolate one as the most important one of all, I would say that the word is adoption. You know, the uh, concept that having a document management service that is only being used by 60% of the user base, it is just not acceptable, you know, from, uh, from productivity and from, a, and from a firm governance, you know, standpoint. It has to be adopted and it has to be adopted not so much because it, it, there's three levels, you know, one because you're forced to, the other one is because you like it. But the third level, you know, is because you don't know that it exists. You know, is that that you do things and you just would do it naturally and you say, oh, there is a document management service, you know, in here. So really, there is one? Uh, so that's why it is so important to be integrated in such a way that when you're in, in your iPhone, and then you were to just log into your Word you know, or your iPad and go into your Excel, that the document services is built in there. When you do a file open, you automatically see your, your, your files in, in the cloud repository. So you know, that is probably, for me, the most important because after all, we have to reach the individual. We have to, to, to reach uh, where he's working. So the concept is, the service has to be where you're at. If, if you're in Outlook, if you're in the, in the app, if, if, if you're in your mobile devices, if you're in a browser, it's just there automatically to the point that the adoption is natural and it is a force. It's not because you have pretty screens. Of course, it's important to have pretty screens in the UI, but it's because just the way, that's just, just the way you work. So that is very, very critical and adoption means that it has a whole bunch of underlying infrastructures. You know, the authentication, the search, the, the way that you learn you know, a, a, across the, the security, all of that, you know, has to build in. But ultimately, why are we doing this? So that there is high degree of adoption and high degree of productivity and ultimately, you know, above adoption so that your work is inspired. So that you just, you're not focusing on the tools, but you're focusing on the outcome you're thinking about how to, you know, what the client reaction would be and, and the results for the client, the benefits for the client. 
that is ultimately you know the goal of all of these infrastructure and all these solutions and we are so ha happy you know that we can work with tremendous partners such as like Terra, you know to uh, simply accomplish that absolutely alvin no i think adoption is something that sometimes overlooked but is, is definitely a key factor in, in ensuring um, you know, the success of, of any system that you adopt. Um, Alvin, as always, thank you very much for the time. Uh, this has been a great conversation, all but short, um, but appreciate it. Uh, great insights. And uh, of course, we are available for any further questions um, as, as people view this at their own convenience. Alvin, thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it. And you have yourself a nice day. Thank you, Ian. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.